So, yeah, I quit my job. Actually, I quit my job several years ago. And this was actually back at the end of 2017 when I quit my job. And my job, it was in a, it was in corporate America, so to speak. It was in a commission-based sales environment, primarily dealing with construction and specifically roofing construction and commercial roofing construction, uh, commercial roofing construction and residential too. But at the end of the day, I quit my job in 2017. Now, I didn't quit to pursue full-time van life, not at that time. I didn't quit my job like a lot of other people and look to you know, downsize, sell everything, become more of a minimalist and uh, pretty much like just uh, get out of the rat race. But, you know, uh, I did quit. And looking back on that decision now, nearly uh, five years later, you know, I'm still happy that I quit my job. And I did from there be create my own business I started my own company and uh, have actually since then created several more businesses which I can get uh, a little bit more in depth and share some more on that in future videos if you guys are interested just let me know but uh, ultimately you know these businesses that I created allow me the opportunity and ability to be able to travel to be able to live full-time out of a van if I so choose which we actually did this summer as we spent my wife and my daughter we spent f about five weeks living in the van traveling the country which was a lot of fun it was really cool and uh, it was the first time we've ever did anything like that huge long road trip the three of us uh, for one for starters and then the van that was a first and then every other day we had no clue where we were going to be next we really only had about two days planned ahead of us uh, mainly for the fact that we were using the two days to uh, secure harvest host locations and koa campsites so we felt like two days was a pretty good cushion where if you waited one day or even the same day there's a chance that you wouldn't actually get a spot so uh, we didn't want to have to force ourselves to do any unnecessary stealth camping or find Walmart parking lots or Cracker Barrel parking lots, which Walmart parking lots are actually, uh, I think they are doing away with the ability to stay overnight and camp overnight in Walmart parking lots. I, I, I'm pretty sure that that's what they're doing. I, I, I heard something somewhere about a, um, a fire. It was a fire as a result of some negligence that ultimately Walmart is taking responsibility for as they didn't provide enough presence or security or uh, um, uh, staff to patrol or maybe monitor their pseudo campsite. So I think they're doing away with that. But at the end of the day, I quit my job and I haven't had a job per se and when I say job, I mean like regular schedule, you know, clock in, clock out, maybe salary, uh, W-2, paycheck. I haven't had that in quite some time. Now, granted, I do receive W-2s from my own businesses, but I don't really consider those jobs in the normal sense of the word. But at the end of the day, I quit my job and, you know, uh, we did end up picking up this van. It's an American Coach Patriot. It's a 2022 American Coach Patriot that we picked up uh, earlier this year from National Indoor RV. And uh, I honestly got it mainly for the, the summer. Well, not just the summer, just mainly for living in Florida because we don't have a house yet in Florida. And our goal was initially to have a house on the beach, which would have been great, would have been awesome but we don't have it yet. So um, in the meantime, I said, hey, let me grab this van. That way, as we're hitting different beaches, we have a house, so to speak. So as we're hitting different beaches, we have our, most importantly, we had a bathroom. We had a clean bathroom that was ours that we knew we were gonna have. And then from there, we had uh, a kitchen, a cooktop, induction. We also have a portable Coleman 
a, a propane two burner. We've got the refrigerator, microwave, sink, water, everything that you could ask for. So it was like, let me grab this for that so that if we're driving around, we're exploring, we're going different places and we find ourselves on a beach or maybe even a secluded beach that doesn't have uh, utilities and restrooms and public restrooms and things like that. This would be great. So we don't have to like pack everything up pack it in, take it to the beach, possibly leave it on the beach as we go find a bathroom. And there's a security issue with that. And then also, uh, Michelle, she would want to be, I know for sure she would want to be on the beach far longer than I would want to be on the beach. So we do really enjoy going to Pensacola beach because it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but there's really nothing there. The area that we like, there's really nothing there. It's kind of secluded, but we can take a trip there. We can go. It doesn't take us long to get there. And when we're there, we're not rushed. We're not pressed for time. If she wants to be on the beach all day long, perfectly fine. I'll come back in the van. I'll chill out. I can pop open a laptop. I can get some work done. Um, I can relax. I can lay down. I can watch TV. I can cool off. I can use the bathroom. And then I can come back to the beach. Uh, and, and, you know, same for her. And then we can eat and, you know, prepare food and things like that. And it doesn't really make the, the trip to the beach seem like a hassle and seem like work. And this, I think to me, it makes it more enjoyable. But that was really the primary reason why I grabbed it was so that we could make our beach going trips even better since we don't necessarily have a house on the beach yet. And I say yet because I don't know if we're actually going to get a house on the beach because as we are doing these things and we're exploring and we're learning new things, we're discovering more and more about what we want and where we want. And also paying attention to the market and the housing market and the prices and things that are going on. And I'm starting to see some uh, some changes in, in, the, in the market and in directions. And I do really think that the housing market bubble is deflating. So this is going to be extremely interesting to see as these prices come down, as interest rates go up, as sellers get more um, motivated. I think it's going to be a really interesting time and a great time to be interested in looking to invest in real estate, which is what we, we plan to do. But uh, regardless, we have the van. We're going to put the van to great use while we do. Uh, I will work on, we got to get this thing cleaned up because it's still kind of a mess from our trip. We got done with our trip. We got back and we just kind of like left it alone. So we need to get it cleaned up. I need to get it dropped off to Mercedes for service because it's due for its first oil change now. And, uh, and, uh, and really get this thing washed because uh, we, I think we got like 10,000 miles on this and it needs a bath. It needs a bath pretty bad. So we're going to do that. But um, in addition, you know, uh, I want to do a full tour on the inside so you guys can see what it's like and maybe help you understand uh, if you're in the market or possibly considering buying a van or maybe moving into a van or something like that, uh, we can show you some things about this one, some things that we've learned, and also what we would do differently if we bought another one, which I think if we bought another one, we would probably have it custom built. But I think the thing about a custom built van is you really need to experience one or a few before, so you really know what you want your custom built van to have and include and not include because there's some things in this van that it's cool that they, we have it and you know it's kind of like a luxury van but uh there's some things in here that i think we just don't need that i wouldn't include in my build so um we'll, we'll get into that in, in future videos but either way uh i will be putting together some more videos of the trip that we took uh so you guys can see some of the places we went and some of the things that we did uh, and maybe answer some questions that you guys may have about your trips because I know for us we had a lot of questions about harvest hosts and KOA campsites and uh, parking and different things like that which by the way class B van very very pleased and very happy that I, I stuck with my gut and went with the class B granted this is the longer wheelbase with the like the extended uh, house so this is pretty much the longest class B there is I think so, you know, it hangs over curbs and things like that, but I can still park it in most parking spots and we were able to drive it through pretty much anything, any city, any town, anything like that. So I'm very happy we went that route. Uh, Class C would have been a struggle. I think Class C would have been a struggle. It would have been nice when you parked and you had a little bit more space inside, but uh, we really just parked and went to sleep. 
or parked and got out and hung out around the van in the class C just driving it like I can remember and I'll show you guys driving down the uh, highway one in Oregon and the Pacific Coast Highway in California a class C no way no way no way I would have tried that but I'm glad we did with the van in, in this class B and we're able to get that drive and see those views and have that experience and just pull off to the side of the road every now and then without it being a hassle I think the class C would have been a hassle and then the class A you're extremely limited with a Class A. Like, we actually spoke to a lot of Class A owners at different campsites in different places, and they all said the same thing. They're great, lots of room. Make sure you get a diesel. Get as much power as you can. It'll make the driving experience that much better. But once you get where you're going and you park it, that's pretty much it. You're either riding a bike, getting an Uber, or towing something behind you as another uh, form of transportation because you're not going to just like um, uh, commute in a class a which there's nothing wrong with towing but a class a as long as it is and then you add on the tow to it it just you know it's just a lot but with that being said we even joked about getting a class a and what would we tow so michelle's got a 2020 or 2021 Jeep Sahara. I don't remember exactly which one. She's got a Sahara with the two-liter turbo. And uh, so we were like, well, will we tow the Jeep? And she's like, of course we would tow the Jeep. I'm like, well, maybe, but maybe we would get a Class A and just tow the van because the van was so easy to drive around. So we would have to figure that one out in the future. But with that being said, future trips and future videos will include some trips in the Jeep Wrangler as she wants to do more camping, uh, more tent camping, maybe even get a rooftop tent uh, overlander style, style for the Jeep. So we'll have that in the works. We do have a trip already scheduled. We had to get book it far in advance to get a, a spot at the Henderson State Beach Park, which is a pretty cool experience, at least that's what I'm told, where you can park sort of, camp sort of on the beach. So we're going to do that later this year. Looking forward to that. But uh, I have plenty more for you guys. If you guys got any questions, feel free to comment below and ask, and I'll do my best to answer them and uh, get you some guys, get you guys some answers on that Dell laptop and some of the questions you were asking for my last video. Which little update: the Dell XPS 15, great machine. Uh, I really love you know the Windows interface, but um, I'm getting more. Uh, comfortable with the laptop and using it more and more and starting to see its flaws and where it doesn't really shine and I hate to say it but I may actually end up um, swapping out not necessarily swapping out but I'll end up going to get a MacBook Pro I'm pretty sure I'll probably end up going to get a MacBook Pro with a new M2 chip and just kind of dealing with the Apple OS X uh, operating system because honestly, I don't think that you can beat an, an, an Apple laptop. I really just don't think you can, especially when it comes to video editing and things like that. The Dell XPS with the NVIDIA GeForce graphics card and you know decent memory, great solid state hard drive, 4K OLED screen, but it still doesn't quite match up to a MacBook, even my MacBook Air, but there's a give and take there, some pros and cons. Now, I will say my XPS 15 is better than my MacBook Air. My, back, my MacBook Air is just bare bones, M1 chip, 8 gigs of RAM. Just, just to, I was testing the waters, just dipping my toe in just to see. And uh, ultimately, I think I'm going to end up giving that one to my daughter for her to use. But uh, I think at the end of the day, for what I want to do, I think a MacBook Pro is probably going to be the best option besides a MacBook Studio. But I want to have the uh, mobility and flexibility of the laptop. So I'll probably go with the MacBook Pro. But I'll keep you guys posted, keep you informed, keep you, keep you uh, updated on what's going on. And uh, more videos to come. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Take care.